Sing it out of your spirit. Can God get some glory out of you? Matter of fact, why don't you just pray to God a minute in the spirit? Just pray in the spirit for a minute. You pray in the spirit. Fire this place up. Lord, let your glory fill this place. Lord, let 
such a glory fill this place we stand in need of you 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 let the glory fill this place 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 come on musicians you take it Let the glory fill the place. 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 We're gonna call on that name that's above all other names. We're gonna call on that name in whom there's power. We're gonna call on that name in whom there's healing that shows up. We're gonna call on that name in whom there's deliverance that shows up. Say Jesus.
you musician, let me hear y'all. I don't hear y'all saying Jesus yet. Y'all waiting on us to say it. It'll turn into a plea after a while. You'll lose a melody and make it a plea.
the name that brings peace, the name that brings joy, the name that brings provision, that name, that name, that name, that name is Jesus. Break it down a little bit. Hold what you got. Don't change that. Don't hold that right there. Don't change that. Just break it down. Traditions of men make the word of God of no effect. Now, some of y'all might have came for a pastor's appreciation. I didn't. I know when it is. I appreciated myself when he gave me the call. It's just 20 opportunities that I done had it by a year. Are y'all hearing me? So some of y'all that came for form, we'll give you about two more minutes and you can go on and go home. But somebody that came to give God the glory, to let God answer their prayer, to see Jesus come on the scene, they need to open up their praise, stop being bound, stop looking around. This is all about you and nobody else. I call upon that name, Jesus, I call upon that name. I remember a season, matter of fact, I remember a few seasons of going through, but I knew I wasn't by myself. I know everybody, I know, I know some of y'all ain't been through nothing, and that's why it's hard to give him a praise. I know some of y'all kept yourselves, provided for yourself, your job opened the door for you. I know some of y'all like that, but I'm not that person. I've been kept by the power of God unto salvation through that power that's in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you something. If sickness is ruling your body, that's because you're not calling on that name. Because when you start calling that name, sickness got to bow. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's peace. In the name of Jesus. I know it's church to y'all, but it's a truth. And some of y'all came bound, and some of you going to leave bound. But Billy Davis is not going to only leave more liberated, but I'm going to leave more elevated. Because I opened myself to God. I asked him for his spirit. And you ought to ask him to fill me with your spirit, God. Fill me with your spirit, God. Purge me, God. Fill me with your spirit, God. See, you scared to ice that. You scared to ice that because you don't want deliverance. You just want church. You want to be able to say you came to church. But you got to want healing. You got to want God. Huh? No good thing will he withhold from them. He won't hold nothing back. He won't hold your healing back. He won't hold your peace back. He won't hold your joy back. I need you to look around the room and tell somebody, all of us have gone through something. But it's not at the same measure. So change your mind, you'll change your situation. Change your mind, you'll change your situation. Change your mind, you'll change your situation. Take your mind back. Oh, no, challenge it. Take your mind back. Say it again. Take your mind back. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. 
they didn't take their mind back. But I come to tell you right now, you need to take your mind back. There is a God, and he's Jehovah. Who do you need? Jehovah Rapha, he is. Jehovah Shalom, he is. Jehovah Jireh, he is. Jehovah Shoboa, he is. Jehovah Tiskanu, he is. He is what you need, but you got to make a plea. I just need serious people right now. Can I get three serious people that need him on the scene? Just call Jesus to come on the scene in your own way. Don't try to do it rhythmically. Just call him on the scene. Come on, do it like you're dialing a 911 in a critical situation. Maybe they didn't hear me. Because to not do what I asked you to do is rebellion. We ain't even letting that go today. Put your hand on your head now. Put your hand on your head. You got something going on. Put your hand on your head. Everybody, hand on their head. Oh, okay. Thank you for obedience and compliance. Wow. <laughs> I got to work.
of God, a mighty praise in the house. Can we bless the name of the Lord God? For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. I'm not saying that the Lord is good for you to agree with me. I'm giving my testimony that the Lord is good. Now maybe he's not done anything for you. Like I said, maybe he didn't heal your body. Maybe he didn't come through when you wanted him to. Perhaps you're even mad at him. But beyond all of those emotions, he's still good. I serve a good God. Is there anybody that serve a good God? Huh? Can we give a good God praise? Can we give a good God praise? Give me a 45 seconds of a good God praise. you're playing keep playing what you're playing can I sing a solo can I sing a solo huh and if you feel like testifying with my solo then you saw a singer too is that all right Boy, they trying to run me now God is my help God
Somebody else ought to be saying this. Heal me, Jesus. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Jesus. Heal me, Lord. All right, we got to stop. We got to stop for real. Y'all know I'm a praiser. I believe that if it's appreciation for me, if there ain't no praise in the house for God, it ain't no appreciation. Because I don't come before God. And I know that by the way you praise God is how much you appreciate me. Because you'll give God a praise first. God that praise before I advance the service and go forward in the word of God I know people say well I thought he was having an appreciation I don't know no 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 form of godliness well I don't cut God out it's all about God I say it's all about God I say it's all about God I'm here to tell you you can appreciate you see it's appreciative when you see the people of God grow in the things of God. Are y'all hearing me? Where's my oil at? Where's my oil at? I need my oil. I need my oil. And, and also while I'm, while I'm getting my oil, we have our evangelist here from Alabama. Come on up. Can we get a, a microphone? Well, she's getting my oil. Give me, a, give me a ready microphone. Hold on a minute. Give me a ready microphone. It's a great day. I say it's a great day. It's a great day. You go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. God is so good. I thank God for um, giving me this opportunity to be here to celebrate our apostle and our beautiful first lady. I thank him for just blessing us to be able to have them in our lives, to put such wonderful leaders over us. The ones that pray for you, The one that loves you unconditionally. The one that stands by God's word. That lives by God's word. That teaches God's word. That gives you the truth. No matter how it feels. He's going to give you the truth. So I, I thank God for putting people in my life like that. That helps me to want to do right. To better myself. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. You know, he always said that God sent him here to, to do a work. And sometimes I wonder, okay, God, um, you, you sent him here to minister your people, to lead your people. And I can say here and say, I know it hasn't been easy all the time. 
I know that it had to constantly pray for us and seek God on our behalf and whether we're right or wrong, whether we're disobedient or obedient, they have to take account for us. So I thank God for putting him and her over us because they are great leaders. Some of them I like to say they're like my, well, they are my spiritual mother and father. They always impart it to us. They're, never, they're not selfish. They're very loving, gentle, motherly. Sometimes a little bit too motherly, but motherly. <laughs> but what it's worth, I love you so much, First Lady. And I thank God. For blessing me, for giving me this gift. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And I always feel your prayers, I feel your love. And the same to you, Pastor Davis. I love you. I thank God for you each and every day. I pray for you. Sometimes I don't pray for myself. I pray that God will continue to bless y'all. Continue to prosper y'all. Continue to keep y'all in perfect health and peace. And joy. And to give you the desires of your heart. You have been here for not only me, for, but all of us. Like I said, I know it hasn't been easy all the time. I know sometimes y'all probably get headaches and, <laughs> and just say, oh, Lord, why me? But why not you? Because he built you for this. He built you for us. Because he knew we needed someone that's strong, someone that's after his own heart, that loves him, that does everything that he can to please him that tells us the truth to help us grow. Even when sometimes we don't maybe not seem to want to grow, but we know it's the truth that comes from you. And I thank you for that. And I love you. I love you, First Lady. And I thank God for you both. Restore my soul and make me whole. Oh Lord, restore my soul. Simple words, it's a plea. Restore. I'll sing it one last time. I know it's a little up there. Restore my soul and make me all. Oh, Lord, restore my soul. So I'll say. I don't do stuff just to do it. Unlike most of y'all, there's power in my words. I know who backs me. 
Billy Davis backed by God. Billy Davis approved by God. Billy Davis chosen by God. There's nothing to prove to man when you know who sent you. There was a man sent by God whose name was Billy Joe Davis Jr. Did not know he had a call on his life. But God knew. And he preserved and he kept. When death tried to show up several times, God kept me. When the enemy tried to kill me as a boy, God kept me. In the first wreck, God kept me. Car was a total loss. In the second wreck, God kept me. Vehicle was a total loss. Because God knew, even when I spent almost six months in the hospital, see, y'all don't know my story. You don't know nothing about me. When God had me over and I see you, I've been there. I know the story, but I know that he's a healer. He's a healer. He's a protector, and he is a healer. You're looking at somebody that made it out of ICU, and I give God the glory. I give him the praise. It came, but it didn't kill me. It showed up, but it didn't hurt me because God kept me. See, sometimes you think you know something about somebody that you don't have an inkling about. But if there's anybody else whose story is like mine today, I want you to shout, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that the wreck didn't kill me. I thank you that the sickness didn't kill me. I thank you that the disease didn't kill me. I thank you that the germ didn't kill me. I thank you that the virus didn't kill me. I thank you, I thank you. You are healer. God, you are protector. God, I give you praise, honor, and glory. I give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for being my provider. I thank you, God, for keeping me, God. I thank you, God, for bringing me through. I thank you, God, for sustaining what belongs to me, God. I thank you, God, that the enemy showed up to take it, but God didn't let me lose it. I thank you, God, that years ago, God, when the house went in foreclosure, God, you didn't let them take it, God, in the name of Jesus, God. But you sent somebody there to the house, huh, with money in their hand. And they said, God told me to give you this because you're in a situation. And I know that God, the same God that sent you, is the same God that's going to heal you. You know who I'm talking about. You're blessed, man. You're blessed, man. And now I speak God's blessing over you. Be it returned. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Some of you struggle with blessing a man of God. But the woman of God, she didn't even struggle. When she showed up with $7,000 in her hand, she said, the Lord told me to give you this. The Lord told me to bless you with this. Yes, she did. I said $7,000 that the Lord told her to bless me with to come out of a situation. I serve a saint God uh, who will put money in a fish mouth, but he'll also touch somebody. Oh, I, I, I serve that God. Uh, that's who I serve. I do go through things. I do go through crisis, but I am the delivered of the Lord. I am the healed of the Lord. Many are my affliction, but God is bringing me out of them all. I don't yield uh, to pressure. Are uh, y'all hearing me? Pressure only comes to make me strong. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. If you think it's easy to know that the anointing of healing is in the house and to come daily on a daily basis and see your mom struggling with something, you think it's easy. It's not easy. 
But God, I give you glory. I honor you and I praise you because God, I thank you that you're my mom's healer. Thank you, God. You're her healer, God. I call you healer. I call you healer, God. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory to God. You think I don't have to take my mind back? I take my mind back every day. Because every day something comes up against me. But every day I trust God. Oh, Y'all can be seated. I got a word. I, I, I come with a word. That was just my phrase. I said that was my phrase. But I have a word. Because there is a word from the Lord. I want to bless somebody with what God blessed me with. Because we got a lot of weak people right now. And I say weak not to be judgmental of you. I say weak not to even uh, be hard on you or to be in a negative connotation. But I'm saying we have a lot of weak people because the things that they've gone through has almost pretty much exhausted their strength. Do I have a real church yet? Who know that the crises in life and the things that they've gone through in life has really wearied them down. And they started out with full metal. They still got metal right now, but it's almost about as thick as four. But God still let you have it. I come with a mindset of fortification today. A mindset to give life back to somebody. To tell you that God wants you healed and he wants to help you. That's why, I, God, I had some people look at taking my mind back. And I wanted to see what they got out of it. And, you know, they began to show me some things. And I heard them speak towards the upward call. Because God gives us an upward call, but when the upward call comes, what most people don't realize, it's filled with challenges and uncertainties. Paul, when he was talking to Timothy, and I want to help some of you all today, listen to what I say and listen to the words of what I say. In 2 Timothy, the second chapter, verses 3 and 4, he says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man wars that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen, key word, chosen him to be a soldier. Let, let me read that again. He said, endure hardness. Now, when I see the word endure, it means to go through. When I, I don't care what, I don't care how you try to define it, to endure something means that you went through it. That, that, am I right? So he said, hardness is going to come, Timothy, but when it comes, take it. I'm trying to give somebody a new mindset today that hardness is there, but all it's doing is approving you. It's showing that God called you. And he said, endure that hardness as a good soldier. But in order to endure your hardness, here's what the Lord is saying to you. He's saying, stop looking at what you're going through. Because that's the affairs, are y'all hearing me, of life. Stop looking at the critical matters in your life. Stop looking at the relationships in your life. And understand that when you're called to be a soldier, the one who chose you does not care about what you have going on at home. And so you're trained to move beyond the events at home. I, I, I just went somewhere. Y'all freezing on me right now. Y'all was excited a minute ago when y'all thought I was yelling. But now I'm giving you some instructions and you don't want them. See, your hardness is going to come through your affliction. Many. Many. Well, what does the word many mean? If God wanted you to go through few, he would have said few. But he did not say few. I don't have a real church up in here. I got a bunch of people. Y'all emo too emotional. I need spiritual people. 
people who are not carnal, people who are not driven by their emotion. God, God wants you to renew your mind. He wants you to look at things. When I look at what I went through in life, and the re that's the only reason I gave it to you early, instead of y'all, you know, a preacher try to hoop at the end. I, I, I don't want to entertain you. I want to give God the glory. And so when I look at the accidents and the incidents that I've gone through, are y'all hearing me? I don't look at them from the perspective I did when I was in them. Because I know God now. I know God. The problem with most Christians, y'all know the Bible, but you don't know the Holy Spirit. And so you sink and you die because you don't have a spirit man of, or the spirit of God living in. You have a spirit man. There's always a spirit inside of every man. And so to know the spirit of God, you have to do something and and when I had inquired about taking my mind back, they gave me a story uh, talking about some patients that they have. Kind of reminds me of Christians when they come to church. And they said one of the tricks that the elderly patients employ is that they want you to think that they're eating. So they'll put their food in their mouth, or y'all hear me, but they'll pocket it. And because you're thinking that they ate it because it's not on the plate, you'll think that they're getting nourished. It's like many of you that come to church and the word of God goes forward. You hear it, but you're pocketing it. There's no digestion because you didn't chew it. Oh, y'all didn't like that. In other words, there was no substance for your spirit, man. I don't want you to go home today malnourished. I don't want you to go home today weak. I don't want you to go home unregenerated in the weak areas of your mind. I want you to be honest with God and say, God, I need to eat what you're saying right now. Oh, y'all hear me? You know, sometimes we get something and they tell us to eat it. Uh, 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 let, 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 let me go medicinal, if you don't mind. Let me go with a, with a medical route. Have you ever had to have a taste and they, they tell you to drink that go lightly? That's some nasty stuff, ain't it? But do you drink it? You don't drink it because you like it. You drink it for the benefits of what you think is going to be a test that's going to give you an outcome. But you won't digest the word of God for an outcome. But you'll drink, go lightly, because a man told you to. Let me move on because I, I know y'all going to get mad at him. I knew you were, you know. But Job speaks to us, and he gives us a, a word of instruction. And this, I want to help somebody that's scared to pick up the, their Bible. I want to help somebody that's too lazy to pick up their Bible. I want to help somebody that if you're not getting your daily nourishment of God's word, you're not trying to grow. I'm not talking about you put on a CD or tape or put on a message on your phone. You ought to be sick and tired of somebody else preaching to you. You need to start preaching to yourself. Faith comes by, but the greatest voice that you can hear is your own. Because that's when you're going to transform. Because the prodigal son said, I came. I don't have that church yet. I came. And I said, when you come to yourself, you will. But if you have nothing to say, but natural stuff, you have natural outcome. Are y'all all right? Am I nailing y'all to the wall? Because y'all looking at me kind of crazy. How's it going at home? God bless you. Job said in Job 23 and 12, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You see what Job said? Job said, I got to eat the word. <laughs> I, I know I done lost a lot. Y'all know what he lost. Y'all went to Sunday school. But Job said, his word is what's ma what matters. His word is what gives me this. And what you have to understand is that Job was not in the dispensation that we're in, whereas the Holy Ghost had not yet come 
when Job was around. But God gave us the Holy Spirit. You're not understanding what I'm saying. We don't have to wait on the Spirit of God to come upon us. He can come from out of us. Ick. Somebody say ick. He can come up out of us. And so he can only come up out of us if he's nourished enough for us to know that he needs to come out in a situation. If he needs to come out in a situation when sickness is there and he needs to come out in a situation when disease is there. If he needs to come out in a situation when provisions are there, it has to come ek out of you. And it will come out of the word of God that was placed in the spirit of God that's on the inside of you so that when you're telling your situation to change, it will change. Y'all, I'm going to need y'all to clap y'all hands because y'all like I'm pinning y'all to the wall. Yeah, yeah, see, you're lazy. You're lazy. You want to play what somebody else has said and then think you're getting a breakthrough from it. No, you're not. You're a breakthrough when you break through. I'll have, I don't have that church yet. I have whatsoever I, I heard on the CD. I have what? Sometimes you need to cut that off. Sometimes you need to cut your favorite people off and become your favorite person. Woo, me and the Lord and the Holy Ghost are. Boy, the Lord, I was talking, me and the Lord, we was talking, and we had this, uh, and boy, let me tell you, it came out, uh, I spoke that thing, I changed a lot of situations, I changed a lot of circumstances, but you want somebody else to do it, I gotta move, I gotta move, I gotta move, but the word of God is substance, it feeds the spirit of God, but it only feeds the spirit of God after you've been converted and called Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, because I, I don't like us to be ignorant, is that all right? But when you don't pick up the Bible, Listen to me, saints. Listen to me well. When you don't pick up the Bible, it's like you're not exercising in the natural. It's like you get out of shape and you become overweight with the cares of this world. And it leads you to a faith failure. Just like overweight and how all that stuff leads to a heart attack. You not getting in the word. Tell your neighbor, don't feel condemned. Thank God that pastor telling you, get in the word. Stop feeling bad. You can't make up for what you didn't do as far as that. You can only start now. Y'all don't like me. Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 15 and 16, thy words were found, and I did eat them. But he said, the word that I found was joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I'm called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Are y'all hearing me? Can I move to the word now? I knew y'all were going to sit down on me. I knew you were going to sit down because y'all don't like the change. Because y'all lazy. But tell me, you're going to have to open that book. Tell me, you don't have to know much, but you have to know enough. The Holy Spirit will tell us what to say in the self-same hour. He will, are you here? He said, I'll give you in Luke. 21 I believe 15 he said I'll give you a mouth and wisdom that your enemies cannot gainsay nor resist that's what the Lord told us Luke 21 15 or 15 21 he, he said I'm going to give you a mouth but I'm also give you wisdom that what comes out of your mouth is spoken in season and in time how in the world are you speaking yourself all the way out of debt when you don't even want to work he said, I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you wisdom. Uh, Y'all don't like me. Y'all don't like me. Y'all don't like me. You understand what I'm saying? See, 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 in other words, we have to go through the stages. Somebody said the stages. Because the book said a child differs not, come on now, from a servant, though he be Lord of all. But when he comes into that maturity, that full age, somebody say full age. Ooh, Pastor David, stop. You're hearing them. They don't like you. They don't like you. They don't like it. I love me some Billy Davis. I told y'all before, how many times y'all heard me say this? I've been saying it about 15 years, ain't it? I love me some Billy Davis because I'm telling you, the Bible said love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if I don't love me, it's impossible to love you. Not no neighbor, you. Tell them you. Come on, be, be honest. You don't even know who your neighbors are, most of you, unless, they, unless you've been staying where you stay. You don't even know your neighbor's name. Cut through the chase. 
we're in a different time and dispensation now. People move in, they move out. You, they don't speak to you. I mean, y'all wave. You don't know if you're speaking to Paul or Peter. You don't know who you're speaking to. I wish I had real people. Y'all didn't like me right there. <laughs> I just gave a truth. Am I right? I'm just about through. Because I wanted to encourage somebody today. I didn't want to break you down. But I will break you down to build you up. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. I'm anointed to do that. But I, I want to tell you something. There are weak people. I look around and I'm happy to see uh, Mother Deloach. I think she's the oldest in the building. 90 years old. My mom is in the building. She'll be 87 in December. Mr. Peter's in the building. He's in his 80s, mid-80s. We thank God for him. We, we got youngsters in the house, too. We got young people in the house. And I'm glad to see young people because when I was listening to the apostle, he told, he said this, he said, if you don't bring up the young generation, there will be no generation of the upright. There will be no generation that will come into the full manifestation of God. What if we just a generation that God called to be 30 or 60 fold and we've capped out? He means for them to go further. And that's why you think the enemy is after your children because of you. No, he's after a generation. But we ought to be praying for a generation. But we also, hold on a minute, hold on. Y'all stop clapping. My, my, my truth ain't y'all. I'm old school. Train up a child in the way that they should go. Not the child train you. No, your child don't have no opinion as a child. They can't process. When I was a child, I thought as a child. You have to guide a child. You have to, you have to put parameters in place. Are y'all hearing me? Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction will drive it forth from the... I, I'm just old. I, I just know the Bible. And so I brought mine up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. They'll tell you. I'm just talking about me. I'm out here to beat you up. So I'm going to shift to closing now. And I brought up the age of the elderly in the church because I wanted them to be comparative. And then I brought up the age of the young youth in here. How old are you, son? What's the oldest one? How old is he? Uh, 14. Shay and Sarkin, how old are you, Sarkin? 14 and 13. Who? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we go from 13 to 90. And you somewhere in between. So listen as I give you this. And I will do it in seven minutes this time for real. I time myself every time I said seven minutes and it looked like it'd be about 20 and 14, but it's really going to be seven this time. Are you hearing me? So y'all help me out. But oh my goodness, oh, and I, I, before we go, we also, we also got to bring uh, Brother Carius up before we go. Um, so we get so thank God for him. So make sure y'all don't let me close out without us bringing him up. Is that all right? I meant to bring him up out the, uh, the evangelist. Help me, help me, help me. So let's get these seven minutes out. Are you with me? Mother Deloach being the oldest in the building, so I'm going to use her as one example, and uh, I'm going to use uh, Sarkeen as the other example, and then we're going to put you in the middle. You got me now. Y'all able to flow with me, right? And at home, you know your age. You're somewhere, I hope you're somewhere between 13 and 90. So the whole emphasis of what I wanted to bring out today was what I felt like brought me to the point of being able to pastor for 20 years. And that's strength. The strength of God. The strength of God. The strength of God. The psalmist wrote in Psalms 46 and 1, 
God is my refuge and uh, strength. A very present help in trouble. Samuel wrote in 1 Samuel 2 and 9. It's important that you catch where I'm going now. 1 Samuel 2 and 9, the B portion, he says, By strength shall no man prevail. So it would almost seem like it would be contradictory for the Bible to say you're by strength, no man is going to prevail. But then we say God is our strength. But what he's saying is that when you're self-sufficient, some horses, some chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord. And so when we, that's Psalm 20 and 7. So, so, so when we understand that, then we know that we have to take the strength of God. Somebody say the strength of God. Well, here's what strength does. Strength comes when we understand grace. God gives us grace to keep going. God gives us grace to do ministry. God gives us grace to do his work. He gives us grace to do everything. So here's the teaching example, and it's very simple and easy for you to follow. You all see my custom pulpit specially built for me. Now, if I were to call Mother Deloach and Mr. Peter to come up here and move this for me, what's the likelihood of them moving it? I, I, come on, huh? it's very low, am I right? Because why? Their bodies have become weak. Now, if it was 50 years ago, but Lot moved it by herself. Are y'all hearing me? If I were to call Sarkeen and Shay up here to, to move it, uh, the odds go up a little bit they may be able, am I right? But I, 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 I believe that they would look at each other kind of crazy. Be like, you make sure you got your part. And so when you go to lift, you know how when you go to do something and it's a failed attempt, and you be like, you didn't live. I believe we have that crisis, am I right? But I also believe that they had a potential to move it. But they would be smart enough probably to employ wisdom and to say we ain't going to try to move it all the way right now. We're going to take some few steps. We're going to lay it down. Are you with me? But if I were to call Brother Mike and Chris up here to move my pulpit, is there any doubt in your mind it's going to get moved? Why, why do you feel like they're going to pick it up? Are they stronger or are they perceived stronger? Because you went by the outward appearance. But strength is inwardly perfected. Strength is an inward thing. Somebody said strength is inside of me. In other words, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When Paul in the second letter to the church at Corinth 12 and 9, he said, his strength perfects my weakness. So he said, therefore, listen to what he said, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Listen, saints, let me teach you how to walk, walk that scripture out. He's saying, you hurting in your body and it's working against you. But you still sitting there and you saying, Lord, I give you the glory that my body is under attack. I give you glory that my mind is under attack so that his power can rest within you. And then the Holy Spirit, because every one of you in here don't declare Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. I know all of you. So you have access but you don't have knowledge. 
Y'all not hear me. And that's a problem. Saints, listen to me. Listen to me with clarity. Mother Deloach, Mother Russ, Deacon Russ, they have knowledge. Shay, Sarkin, they don't have the level of knowledge because they don't have life experience that matches up to the knowledge that they have. But Shay and Sarkin have something more than likely that Mother Deloach, Mother Russ, and Deacon Russ don't have. They have time. When we are older, we have knowledge, but our time is at hand. When you're younger, you have time, but you lack knowledge. So you need to get into the word and let the Holy Spirit administer to you. Here's my closing line to y'all, because y'all look like I heard y'all today. I dropped deep, I know I did. Here's where you're missing God at. I need you to clap right there. I need you to clap. Turn it to a Pentecostal moment right there. Turn it to a Pentecostal moment right there. And I want you to know that here is where you're missing God. I want to tell you that you're missing God because you didn't get to know him, because you didn't read the word. But if you'll get in the word, you'll get to know the true and living God. I want you to know something, and I'm not playing with you right now. The reason that you're missing God is that you're looking at his spirit the wrong way. His spirit is not a thing. You can't order it like you order a thing. I want to tell you this for real, that the spirit of God is a person. And until you know him as a person, you'll never get the benefits of the person. So I want to wake you up today and tell you to get to know the person of the Holy Spirit. Get to know the person of the Holy Spirit. Stop asking for power and get the knowledge to know the person. Because if you know the person, you know what you can ask for. I can go to Mother Deloach and I can ask her for something. And I believe she's gonna always say yes because she never turned me down. I can go to Mother Russ. I can ask her for something. And I believe she's gonna give it to me because she never said no. When these mothers never say no, you know why they don't say no? Because they respect who I am in the Lord. They can see the God in me. They see the God in me and they honor the God in me. So they sow into me, they give into me. They're not blind, they're not dumb, they're wise people. I want to tell you something. Many of you, the reason you can't see who I am because you never saw the spirit of God of who you are. But once you see who you are in the spirit, you'll understand what Jeremiah wrote when he said, I'll give you pastors uh, after my own heart uh, who will feed you with knowledge uh, and understanding. I want to talk to somebody today who know that they are anointed, who know that God called them, who know that the spirit of God is on the inside of you. That's the only one I want to talk to right now. If you know God is resonant on the inside of you and the spirit of God is resonant within you, I need you to stand up and begin to give God some praise. Uh, even if you're at home, I want you to give God some praise. I want you to glorify God in the fire. I want you to glorify him in your sickness. Uh, I want you to glorify him in your infirmities. Uh, I want you to glorify him in your weakness. For the Lord is God, and God is good, and it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, but the only way you're going to be able to do it is to take your mind back, to take your mind back and say, God, I want to know 
the person of your spirit. I want to know who you sent to represent Jesus. I want to know he has come and I want him in my life. I want relationship with the Holy Spirit. I want intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I want the knowledge and counsel of the Holy Spirit. Lord, help me. Lord, help me to open my eyes that I may see. Give God some praise up in this place. Can I get you to preach with me for about three seconds? Can I get you to say, for the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy endured forever to your generation, to my generation, to their generation. God is good. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I believe the saints used to sing a song that said, Lord, I thank you for that journey that you brought me. Brought me from a long way home. Lord, I thank you for your journey. I thank you for your keeping power. I thank you for your saving power. I feel like preaching right now, but I'm going to leave it alone as I look at the people of God. And I know that God kept your mind. He kept your mind. He kept your mind. He kept your mind. He kept you in perfect peace. He didn't let you go to baby behavior. He didn't let you go to your more cold behavior. No, he kept your mind. He kept your mind. They told you to take the medicine. You say, I'm not taking the medicine. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. You know why? Because he will keep thee in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee. I say he'll keep you in perfect peace. I want to talk to somebody whose mind been kept by God. If you know your mind been kept by God, I need you to shuffle those feet right now. I need about 20 seconds. I can't have more than 20. Tell him thank you, tell him thank you. Oh, tell him thank you. Oh, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. Holy Spirit, he's real too. He's real. He is Jesus' representative here on earth. Are oh, y'all hearing me? Sometimes we get so caught up in religion. Boy, you better leave that alone, boy. Boy, you about to make me kick off on that one.
gotta move, we gotta move. Ah. Woo, this is real. Ah, 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 ah. Won't you give somebody an air high five? Air high five, somebody. Give them an air high five. I want somebody to feel better. Say this. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. White. Can I get somebody to run for Mother White? Can I get somebody else to run for the widows in the house? Can I get somebody to run for the widows in the house? Can I get somebody to run for the infirmed in the house? Can I get somebody to run for the sick in the house? Can I get somebody to run for those whose finances have been messed up? Give God a praise, give God a praise. We coming out, we coming out, we coming out. We coming out. Yes, he's real, he's real. He's real, he's real. Brother, Brother Karsh. We got a microphone, we're bringing him, we're bringing him one, we're bringing him one. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I am so happy to be back in the house of God. I'm happy to see everyone this morning. There has been a lot going on. I am happy to be here. Last anniversary. 
the Davis family as a whole has done a lot for me. They have been influential in my life. They have prayed for me and looked after me even when I haven't done the best for myself. I know everyone here can have something good to say about them. From the bottom of my heart, I'm grateful for everything that not only you or your wife have done, but also for what you've allowed your son to do for me, to extend your home to me, to treat me just as one of your own children. I can't thank you enough for that, and I thank God each and every day for y'all. Come on, give God that praise. Give God that praise. For the Lord to give it. It's offering time. It's offering time. Getting ready to go home. Keep playing what you're playing. Keep playing what you're playing. Keep playing what you're playing. Give it three part harmony on this.
rebuke the devourer, empower your people financially. But not only that, God, let supernatural favor come past them as a shield, God. Keep them, God. Sustain them and bless them. It's your servant's prayer. I'd like to thank all of you that, on behalf of the Davis family, Lady Davis, you want to say anything? I don't want to be remiss in my duties. You want to say anything? You all right? Y'all good? I don't know everybody like, he let nobody say nothing. We just, I just want to give God glory. That all right? I want to thank God. That's how I do it. Also, I want to remind the body of Christ at large, body of Christ at large, uh, the Johnson family suffered a loss today. Sister Dot died this morning. Sister Dot passed this morning. And we give God glory. Let's keep the family lifted up in prayer. The Johnson family, let's keep them lifted up in prayer. We give God the glory and honor and the praise. We thank God for her life. We thank God for the family. We thank God that the transition has happened. And we give him the glory. Are y'all understanding me? And we give him the honor. And we give him the praise. Come on, there's perfection in the work of God. Huh? Teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Stop being hard-headed. Listen to what God said. Capitalize on our time. Because we don't know. But we all know that life is but a vapor. Ah, Y'all don't like me right now. But life is but a vapor. And we're, quick, we're here and then it's quickly vanished. Is that all right? Did I miss anything else again? We thank you. We honor you on behalf of the Davis family. God bless you. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. You be blessed. Powerhouse. Thank you for joining us at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. We hope you are truly blessed by the message delivered on today and that you will join us next time in the Powerhouse. We are located at 1603 Fortune Avenue in Panama City, Florida, where Sunday services begin at 10.30 a.m., Wednesday night Bible study at 6.30 p.m., and Saturday morning prayer at 8 a.m. Connect with us on Facebook at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse or on YouTube at C-O-T-P-O-H to stay up to date on ministry concerns, issues, and projects. Support the ministry from home via Cash App at dollar sign S-G-P-H-W-E-L-L or with Givelify at Shekinah Glory Ministries, Panama City, Florida. This is Shekinah, where faith is personified, hope is actualized and love is exemplified. Welcome to the powerhouse.